This morning I'm in the Lincolnshire town or village of Donington. It's the birthplace of Matthew Flinders, but what I actually want to tell you about is his companion. His companion was a cat. Ship cats are nothing new, you will notice how carefully I said that. Throughout the history of shipping and navies, they play an important role aboard the vessels. Mainly because at ports, especially in the 1700s and 1800s, you'd get all sorts of vermin, rats, mice, uh, jumping aboard the ships, climbing the ropes. And they would uh, chew through those ropes so that the ships would come away from the port. They'd also damage the cargo uh, and carry diseases, as we know from the Black Death. As you can imagine, the cats born at sea were particularly feral, almost as feral as the sailors they shared the vessels with. What actually caught the crew's attention about this particular cat is but as a kitten he fell overboard and was able to swim back to the ship and climb back aboard using the ropes after surviving that uh, the cat quickly became the ship's favorite with Matthew Flinders noting that its agility of mind and survival instincts were amongst the best he'd ever seen in an animal Matthew Flinders decided that this cat would be his but it needed a suitable name he searched high, low, far and wide in his mind uh, for a name. But the one that kept coming back to him was the name of the butler in a, a book he'd just read by Lawrence Stone called Tristram Shandy. The, the butler's name was Trim and he was such a, a loyal and affectionate guy that he just couldn't think of a better name for this cat. After several successful voyages together, they both ended up back in Britain. But it wasn't for long because Matthew Flinders was given his first command this time of the HMS Investigator, and they set off on an adventure. It was on this voyage on the Investigator that they entered folklore and the history. And it wasn't just because they were the first ones to mask up during a pandemic. It's because they circumnavigated mainland Australia. Unfortunately, the, the actual circumnavigation was never really finished because the Investigator uh, was found to be pretty rotten. Uh, they then boarded HMS Porpoise to return to Britain. But Trim on this journey again showed his amazing survival skills. As they were sailing past uh, an area which, which became known to us now as the Great Barrier Reef, uh, an area which also became known as Rex Reef, claimed the Porpoise. It sank there and then. They both survived. Matthew Flinders seemed to be becoming a bit of a, a glutton for punishment, so him and Trim then took charge of a schooner, the HMS Cumberland, which was actually known to be pretty wrong. Uh, but he, he was determined to get home, so they forced sail. Uh, but as they were approaching the Ile de France, which we now know to be Mauritius, uh, it just became unsailable, so he was forced to dock there. Once they docked, Everything should have been fine, but it wasn't. It all went to pot. Matthew Flinders was imprisoned and Trim was separated from him. And this seems to be where Trim's luck ran out because it's likely uh, and well documented that a Tahitian chief imprisoned on Mauritius during the Franco-Tahitian War was very hungry and likely ate trim.